At Geneva, the massive palace of the League of Nations houses the last assembly of the organization which once symbolized the world's hope of peace. Down the long corridors pass the representatives of the 44 nations who remained members. At the winding up ceremony, the delegates sat to a background of empty seats. From Britain came veteran statesman Lord Cecil, an honored name among the peacemakers. The League of Nations may have failed to prevent war, but the work of Lord Cecil and others is carried forward by UNO. Where peace seems far away is Trieste. In this problem city, Italian demonstrators demand that the town should not be made part of Marshal Tito's Yugoslavia. Rioting Italians, plus anti-British propaganda blasts from Tito, make Trieste a powder keg, where British and Allied military authorities have a tough job in keeping order. Street battles flare up and die away just as quickly into more orderly processions. And the Allied peacekeepers take a breather and wait for the next outburst. Trieste lives uneasily, Italians and Yugoslavs waiting for a chance to fly at each other's throats. In Berlin's city centre, the black marketeers are out again. Barter replaces money as men and women bring out their valuables to trade for food, cigarettes and clothing. You can find almost anything here, but on this particular day, one item was unexpected. The police. Then things happen. British trained German police round up the black market operators. Nobody gets through the ring, and the awkward ones are liable to get a rough handling. Everybody is netted, traders and bystanders alike. Next stage is to load them onto waiting police wagons and take them off for searching and questioning. Lookers on will be released after interrogation. Racketeers get a stiff jail sentence. Only perpetual vigilance keeps Berlin's food racketeers in check. And vigilance is what they're getting. 